defensive steps. You must decline the policy. One is limits. Negative arguments against the resolution should win on average 50% of the time. Their information makes the negative relevant because the out game becomes how do we reason that they can't answer instead of how do we make a good argument for the resolution to top it with the <coughs> rejoinder is a prior question because contradiction research and disagreement are the foundation of debate, which is other academia and monologue too. This creates a clash. A consistent topic is a stable research incentive that forces arguments to refinement the process of improving our apps and continuously researching the same issues teaches debaters arguments to construction even if the topic is imperfect it makes us more persuasive and capable advocates even if debate aren't over the issues over which we ultimately hope to advocate one framing issue is that a lot of their offense emphasizes the way policy debates have played out and the way that the state has done environmental policy but that's not what our interpretation necessarily facilitates you should hold the line to intrinsic offense that's tied to our interpretation as opposed to we dislike the way that policy debates have existed their first argument is structural fear is one is that's not a reason to make debate less fair their information makes it always biased towards the app in particular and helps schools with more resources write an unlimited number of arguments that small teams can't come up with which only exacerbates structural unfairness but two is structural unfairness isn't a reason to vote app a they don't solve it it's the reality of debate in a single ballot can't meaningfully affects debate resource constraints and race issues within the university <coughs> if you don't cause it our interpretation doesn't force individuals methods or processes out of debate it only prescribes a stasis point for contradiction which is distinct from x person can't debate x form of scholarship should be excluded for debate or x idea isn't welcome in the topic which is the idea around which most of their offense is based their next argument is that we're paternalist that line of logics makes any alternative or contradiction to the f inherently racist or paternalist which is not a good way of thinking about contradictions in debate the neck has a burden of rejoinder and we presented an alternative way that we should approach the topic and debate our argument isn't that we should exclude one group or one individual but rather a model we should prescribe to in order to generate beneficial contradiction that doesn't mean that their arguments aren't valuable or beneficial it just means that every beneficial valuable interesting or academically worthwhile argument can't be included in the topic because the neg is forced to respond and there has to be some level of contradiction <coughs> even if it's imperfect their next argument is that there has to be some method of individual identity included in debate our interpretation doesn't exclude that obviously individuals influence policy and i think that a lot of their solvency arguments in the case only help us with this component because if it's true that the way that we think about community organization or individual relationship to the climate etc all influence the way that we form policy then it's also possible for that to play a part in the decision making of something like the usfg should not do something that bad with the climate which i'll get to later on top of a version of the app but their next argument is productivity asking ruckers to be t and what their authors criticize or rather what they criticize read black women productivity is a false equivalence one is for the activity to function as a debate contradictions as opposed to app monologue to some degree of structural fairness is inevitable throwing away a predictable topic isn't meaningfully different from getting rid of speech times decision times tournament rules etc which all allow the conversation to begin with too is if Rutgers truly wanted to be unproductive they wouldn't follow speech times cite authors bring tons of coaches to scout answer process questions etc to some degree they've still made a productive argument insofar as they're attempting to persuade you with their ballot it's arbitrary and inconsistent to decide as t is the breaking point that <coughs> activity bad insofar as it relates to their arguments about how economies neoliberals and institutions etc are centered on a different form of productivity than what t represents three is it proves the distinction between productivity in that meta sense that society constructs and in a debate where everyone invests all this time into winning ballots for is if debates are never productive in any sense you should vote negative presumption because there isn't any goal towards the strategy their response to this argument will prove the utility of their productivity offense because it's not productivity bad as in having goals is bad it's about productivity in society which is different from t fifth is our criticism of being on top of what isn't you as a human being or both of you as a human being are unproductive it's a debate necessitates some baseline or dialogue if the one is just right topical action with i want to be unproductive we wouldn't stand up and say you have to be productive we just read a dissent their next argument is kvk debates topical three arguments one is it's impossible to decide whether or not our model is good based on other debates and decide whether or not they're productive or educational model the model debate is the only way to decide topicality debates because it's most objective and we've presented a way that debate should take place that's not to say that other arguments shouldn't be included in debate but this is the only way to create a principle stasis point two is it similarly sure that we've personally had good debates where individuals have used their personal experience critical arguments different methods poetry etc to justify the idea that the usfg should stop doing certain climate policies third is the topical version of the app they can reject white patriarchal climate policy to challenge the state they criticize their harms areas or critiques of current climate policy but the resolution is durable and valuable giving the app the opportunity to challenge government knowledge within the confines of the topic the topical version can ban pollution for white male corporations to cost them tons of money and personal labor or redistributive carbon tax towards black women black pollution land pollution in black communities and shift carbon to white neighborhoods 
neighborhoods and polluting transportation policy that encourages GHG car use that disproportionately affects certain <gasps> communities. Their argument will be that their method is a prerequisite to state engagement that is A, endlessly arbitrary because methods are only useful insofar as they reach some end point of action in the process of the act and incorporate their method as a justification for their climate policy. B, is it proves that their theory is mutually exclusive with state action because at some degree it seeks to influence the way that they operate. C, is nothing about T or T version requires the act to the state or commit to totalizing investment in institutions. To vote nay, you don't have to think that the T version solves all of their offense because that's just the point. The F can't have a perfect policy, otherwise there'd be no point in having a debate, but you can go neg because a significant amount of their harms are compatible with the way that we've presented the topic. Nothing about our interpretation values individuals, that was above, but creating an interpretation where debate is about individual V, individual is bad, and links to all of their offense. One is when the F asks you to vote for their experience in debate or institutions or to vote for a certain group, they force the negative to personal attacks. Debate or re-debater isn't a productive academic method because it heavily devolves to some power relations they criticize too. It's inauthentic. When debaters win or lose based on their personal experiences, there's incentive to lie about oneself or argue an opponent is lying about themselves, presuming inauthentic identities like, oh, all the judges must be white or all the judges should vote for us because this is how we identify ourselves as bad. Your bride supports this argument. We have to make our beliefs subject to controversy and we can't know ourselves as incontrovertible truths that includes deliberative politics, which links to all of our offense, and we can acknowledge that we're situated without presenting personal identities and methods for decision making. They say that we exclude framework debates, not the content, because you can still read an alt versus an app that says that the USFG should. They said T version excludes self care. That was answered above. You can still include personal experiences and justification for why the government should not do something. Nothing about argument testing is inherently anti black, or otherwise we would never have the capacity to respond to any form of an argument, which creates a false equivalent and means the debate would literally have no purpose. And again, you can vote neg on perception. Their last argument is an access argument. One is it's not linked to our model of debate. Two is all of our arguments in that response to their structural fairness claims answer this component. You should make your ballot a metric on how the debate community operates unless there's a link to the way that we presented debate as a model. Lastly, is our model that provides the best interpretation of understanding the way that the state responds to climate policy. It's important to know about the climate, even if but things like biological death and global warming causes extinction are our only consideration. Things like pollution, coal emissions, waste dumping, and nuclear plants are all symptoms of the colonizer's cure. The government removes waste from one community, stuff on another, or develops coal with disregard to poor communities. It's impossible to challenge these and other bad practices that all contribute to the cycle of bad institutions that the 1AC has criticized without an intricate understanding of the way that the EPA operates. You can think of all of our all of our internal link arguments, but arguments to refinement as an internal link to this type of understanding. Now, the case, I think that their first section about productivity was answered with the five set point block they read on T. Their next argument is psychic violence. One is all of our offense against debating individuals is responsive to this claim. We think that anyone making arguments about how a certain structure affects them as a person is impossible to negate and will only be more violent as a form of controversy. Two is topicality isn't a link to psychic violence. It's a false equivalency because we haven't forced individuals to change the way they view or act themselves, even if we've said that the point of stasis in this debate should be distinct. Their next argument is about black self-care. That also links to our personal negation argument. It's simply impossible for people to stand up and say that the way that an individual chooses to adopt a personal strategy is a bad thing or to contradict it as a way that one wants to view the world. Their next argument is that our interpretation silences discussion about issues in the community. One is that's on a dissent to T because nothing about reading an app that relates to something like institutions being bad because the way they do climate policy precludes discussion of things like institutional racism too is it's not a reason to vote out for the same reasons that structural unfairness isn't a reason to vote out. If it's true that the app creates a better communal approach to fairness than a communal approach to policy, it just demonstrates that it can be a prerequisite and part of the process that's related to discussion in climate policy. Their last argument is about a Rudy card. Rudy doesn't reject norms in the way that they say. Rudy just says that it's possible to work within imperfect norms in order to have some form of dialogue that leads us to solutions like imposing the state from within in the context of the topical version of the app. Hey everyone, welcome back to this breakdown of a framework debate between Rutgers and Georgetown at the 27 NDT on the Restrict Emissions College topic. At this point of the debate, the lines of argument are quite clear, and surprisingly, there are not that many distinct ones to consider. Georgetown's main offensive argument is that debate requires negation. They refer to this as disagreement and contradiction as well. What makes debate unique is there is a well-prepared team forced to disagree or rejoin what the affirmative team says. Starting the debate with a topical plan facilitates this process, but allowing the F to choose whatever they want disrupts it. The additional link Georgetown has is the subject matter of Rutgers F is bad to negate. 
we shouldn't try to contradict personal experience or personal strategies. Let's discuss this argument some more. Why is it bad to negate apps like Rutgers? One, it could be traumatic or harmful to try and negate someone's personal experience. Two, it could encourage problematic behavior on the part of participants. They could lie or be inauthentic, inauthentic to try to gain an edge. Three, even if disagreement is harmless, it isn't as beneficial as debating about the resolution because of predictability and limits facilitating more research and in-depth clash. What has Rutgers said about this notion? Well, this is really the first time Georgetown has tied the notion of negative ground, which in the 1 and C is presented as a limits question, to this notion of debating personal experience and self-care. So we're going to have to see what Rutgers' direct response is in the 1AR. As we saw in the cross section of the 2AC, Rutgers said it isn't our job to care about what the NIG says, but that cross section wasn't couched in these exact terms like the 2 and C is. One interesting thing is Georgetown has read McBride cards that says we should disagree with people's self-understandings, which implies that we should negate their personal understandings, which seems to be the opposite of what's being claimed in the first half of the 2 and C. We will see if Rutgers brings up said contradiction. There are three other strands of argument I want to talk about, and they're mainly defensive in nature. The first is this discussion about productivity. Natalie's main point is topicality is not the same thing as what is being described by Rutgers. This is Georgetown's first attempt at dealing with the claims about Black women's experience specifically. This section could have used some setup from the cross-sexes of the 1AC and 2AC. There's just not enough context or discussion about the descriptive accuracy of Rutgers' claim to move the needle very much here about the nature of Black women's experience or their oppression. Second defensive argument is T is not exclusion. Again, a lack of specificity creates an opening for Rutgers here. It isn't the case that Rutgers said, you are banishing us from debate, but you're telling us how to do debate, and that's coming from a problematic place as it relates to Black women. The discourses of debate should change as they relate to Black women. This is encompassed in the Rutgers notion of being carefree. So this argument that T is not exclusion may not minimize things as much as Georgetown thinks. Third is topical version of the F. I'll say this on the side, I hate this phrasing. If the F doesn't have to tell the neg what to do, the neg obviously doesn't have to write a 1EC to get a judge to vote negative. But let's talk about the, this notion. There's two things I'd like to mention. One, does the topical version resolve the ass impacts? Perhaps, insofar as you can have a lot of different things in the 1AC, I guess banning pollution could be a form of self-care. It isn't what Rutgers has identified as self-care. And similarly, the silence around potential violences specific to debate I guess you could talk about both those things at the same time. It's not clear why you would, but I guess you can include all those things in the same 1AC. But this idea that you can put a lot of stuff in the 1AC leads to number two, which is Devon's answer to this argument in the 2AC, which is there would be trade-offs and a focus would be subsumed elsewhere if we included a plan and tried to talk about the same subject matter. And Natalie doesn't really describe how these debates would happen in a productive way with a back and forth between the affirmative and negative. She just says there's no inherent reason all these things can't be in the same 1AC. So there's a bit of a gap there and not answering Devon's argument as specifically as possible. So Devon's cross strategy could be centered around pointing out some of these holes in these defensive arguments, or it could be diving in to this main offensive argument that Georgetown is making about negating self-care, since that's been packaged all together, really, for the first time here in the 2NC. So let's see what happens. What? Are you ready, Natalie? Okay. okay. Uh, what is different from status quo debate in your model? Well, <laughs> I mean, so I don't really know how to answer that question, because obviously status quo debate, like different debates prescribe to different models. Right, so, so the debate that says that we cannot do what we do, that we debate the same framework shit everywhere else, well, so why is your interpretation of your model different than that model? Because I don't think that our argument is that you can't talk about individual experience, that you can't talk about like 
non, you know, like only institutional issues. It's just that the stasis point has to be a normative statement of whether or not domestic climate policy should happen. So it needs to be whether or not the federal government, well, that needs to be the end goal. Well, that has to be like the stasis point for discussion, but the way that we cool. justify and discuss those policies is incredibly malleable. The last question for me is the proposal in particular. It was not the word you had, right? You laid out a couple. Can you like point to me what the block is going to sound like in those things? So if I read that app, what would the block So like an example of this is an app that talks about- Yeah, I, I want to talk about more like, um, you said, uh, so make, make, make white communities uh, get attacks for like pollution. Yeah, so, I, so what is I'm the, guessing what is that your your one AR argument is going to be like, oh, the NEG will just read DAs. Our response to that will be when the NEG reads a DA and the app has to defend their theoretical assumptions behind the idea that we should privilege certain communities over others and that we should influence individual experience. So in it just forces us to draw out the conflict between the way that these. I don't want to cut you off. That's rude. But okay. In that conversation, uh, how do we talk about racialized and sexualized violence? Well, so racialized and sexualized violence in debate towards individuals, we don't think should be a metric for the ballot. So we should never talk about that with the ballot? No, we don't think that we should never talk about it, but we think that it shouldn't be a metric for who wins or loses, because we think that that links to all of your arguments Why? about how it causes violence against individuals, because mm. it's unverifiable. Oh. It causes personal attitudes <coughs> that the judges no, can't personally interpret. Yeah. So you said that prerequisites are arbitrary. <coughs> Why is your interpretation on perfect not a prerequisite to the affirmative? What do you, what do you, mean you said that? that in order for us to have better debates and understand what so, they should be, we should use the plain text idea that yeah. you are a prerequisite to the affirmative. Well, no, so I think the argument I was trying to make, and my apologies if this is unclear, but the idea that any certain method is a prerequisite to understanding how government engagement operates just demonstrates that it can be a part of that process in dictating whether or not the USMG should do right. So, why is Framework not an example of that? An, an example of what? Of being that prerequisite. I don't think framework or T is the prerequisite. You said that it's better for us to understand, like, as far as like understanding the state, understanding our form of advocacy inside a debate, and creating better forms of competition. So my argument is just that they're compatible. That's what I'm getting at. Cool, cool, cool. So um, I guess my other question is, why exactly should debate happen under your model? Like, I'm very so confused about what your model implicates. Well, yeah. So we have a couple of offensive arguments. I think the first one is that under our model, there's a stasis for predictable clash. So the first part of that cross-ex was used to discuss the trade-off to said concerning reading topical apps and engagement over other substantive issues. And it even got as explicit as saying certain things can be talked about, but shouldn't factor into the decision calculus of assigning balance. This was one of the areas that we thought Rutgers might bring up as a point of emphasis in cross-ex. And I'm sure that going forward that they're going to bring up this argument in general and this notion that Georgetown was so explicit, they're going to bring that up in later speeches to support their claims to trade off disads. The business about prerequisites and arbitrariness, I believe that Natalie is pointing the two and C was saying the AF is a prerequisite and not just advocating a course of action is the arbitrary act. You can do both. You can say that you investigate your personal experience and your communal relations and whatnot. And then the endpoint of the 1AC is a prescription for government action. They are exclusive, is Natalie's point. I don't believe that this was necessarily the best way for records to undermine the credibility of some of Georgetown's defensive or offensive arguments by due to lack of specificity. And it was interesting. The last question gets cut off by the buzzer. And it's interesting that there was no cross ex question about this notion of negation, about Georgetown's central claim that what Rutgers has presented is not negatable. And Georgetown's trying to maintain this distinction that it can be valuable, it can be accurate, it can be true, it can mean a lot to the individual people, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the best subject for debate. And that, all those notions kind of go unspoken to in this cross examination. So that takes us through the end of the constructives and the cross-examinations. I will see you in the next video as we enter the home stretch of this debate.